Hello guys and welcome to another episode of Everyday EDC. My name is Tyler and today we are reviewing the Best Tech Bison. <clears throat> so is Ronnie apparently who is frustrated that we just started our review. So before I get started with my Best Tech Bison review, I'm going to do kind of an announcement here. Um, if you guys have watched, and I'm not even going to name what video, um, those of you guys that are kind of like dedicated viewers, you guys watch almost every video start to finish, uh, you just, you, you, you just maybe even put it on the background, you just use it as background noise. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, I do appreciate every, you know, everybody that watches, but those of you that just kind of click through, I obviously appreciate the ones that value my content more. And so, as you guys know, I do do a lot of giveaways. I've given away... 10 knives so far, some more on the way, plus another one at 500 subs. What I'm going to tell you right now is that I am no longer going to announce my giveaways. I am, I'm, I'm not going to do it. My, my goal for the giveaway shouldn't be to draw in more people. It should be to reward the people that are actually appreciating my content and showing my appreciation for them. So I'm going to call them Easter eggs. I might give a hint that there may be an Easter egg in a video or X, Y, and Z, but I am no longer ever going to announce a giveaway. Um, that may change as things progress, but going forward from this point on, I just appreciate the guys that are kind of giving back to the channel and just appreciating what I do rather than just kind of clicking through. So call it pompous, call it what you will. It's really my appreciation for the guys that have helped build this channel and are a part of this community. So into the review. Today we have the Best Tech Bison. The Best Tech Bison comes in with a D2 blade, a titanium frame lock on one side with an over travel stop right here, titanium pocket clip, G10 on the other side, and there is a half liner that, I don't know if you guys can see it, it's literally right in there and it only rides for like the length of my pinky, like the width. It doesn't go on this side, it rides this whole way, which is kind of interesting. Let's get into some specs real quick. All right. I am going to guess that this is 4.27 ounces. 4.28 ounces. Man, I'm a freaking genius. Not true. I was watching plenty of reviews on this before I did my review because I wanted to make sure that I was ready for this and I didn't miss anything. Um, all right. Let's go into blade stock thickness. Blade stock thickness is coming in at about 150 thousandths. The behind the edge thickness is coming in right at around 20 thousandths. And thanks to Corey, he put this pretty cool mirrored edge on here, which I don't have anything to really demonstrate it. Let's see if this will do it. Nah, I don't know how he does it. He has a certain lighting at a certain angle and it shows all the colors. It's pretty cool. So 20 thousandths behind the edge. Let's check the overall length of this guy. Overall length coming in at eight and a half inches. The blade length is coming in at just about 3.6. And the overall cutting edge is coming in at about three and a quarter. Let's check the width of the handle real quick, just cause I need to get in the habit of doing that. That actually means quite a bit. Coming in at exactly half an inch, which is pretty freaking cool. Half an inch is pretty standard. You see that on most knives. The overall height of this knife is one, one and one quarter inches, which isn't bad. Um, to put that into perspective, the PM2 or the Manix 2, one of the two, is coming in at like 1.6. That's like, oh shit, that's obnoxious. All right, let's go into our size comparisons. Size comparisons changed up a little bit this time, but I have some of the same ones. We have the Rat Model 1, which is coming in at just about the same size, and the Rat Model 2, which is coming in at much smaller. As usual, as I'm doing these size comparisons, I like to tell you guys that I do a shit ton of size comparisons so that you guys can see a knife that you may be familiar with that you may be able to reference how large this knife actually is. Here we have the QSP Copperhead coming in at a little bit smaller, maybe a half inch overall, not too bad. And then we have the QSP Puffin coming in at much shorter. Next up, we have the Deathcon Kabuto, 
Which, you know, I show these just because I like to play with these every now and then. I know you guys probably aren't too familiar with the Kabuto or the Falcon. But it's about the same size as the Kabuto. Kabuto's a little bit longer uh, due to the little freaking window stabber there. And, you know, maybe a tenth of an inch longer in the blade. We got a lot of things going on. Kids whining, dogs running around. We have the large feldspar. And the mini feldspar. Large feldspar is coming in at just shy of the overall length of the Best Tech Bison, and the mini feldspar is obviously coming in at much smaller. Last but not least, I'm going to show the Spyderco Astute just to show a Spyderco knife on here. Obviously, the Astute's coming in at much smaller than the Bison. The Bison is a large, I would say just slightly above average sized knife. All right, now that we've seen the size comparisons, we have seen the specifications. What are my thoughts on this knife? So first and foremost, this isn't a brand new knife. This is a knife that came from Corey over there at the Practical Blade. So thank you to him. Let's see here. Had a little bit of blade play in there. This is running on ceramic ball bearings. And it does have a steel insert where the ceramic ball bearings are. So the ceramic is not running on the titanium. Because we all know that titanium does get eroded by those ceramic ball bearings. A little bit of blade play. Action's still good. This isn't indicative of the knife. I'm just trying to fix this so that I don't send him a knife back with shitty action. Or blade play. So the blade, after the length of time of owning it, is still centered. The fit and finish is great. It has this recessed steel liner on half of the G10 side. This is nothing to do other than just a pivot cover, really. It's pretty cool looking. This is where you adjust it. This is a T8 adjustment screw right here. And actually, this may not be a T8. This may be a T10. Let me see, I'm just adjusting it with a T8 like an idiot. Is this a T10? This is a T10 adjustment screw. All right. So the rest of the screws, let's check them here. So the rest of the screws appear to be a T6. So we have a T10 pivot and T6 screws all else around. We do have this unobtrusive lanyard cutout, which is nice. And then we have this backspacer, which I don't know if it's steel or carbon fiber. That I am unsure. I'm sorry, steel or titanium. Uh, brain fart there. So, fit and finish is great. Quality is great. The knife size is great. Let's talk about the ergonomics. So, in hand right here, the ergonomics are pretty damn good. In hand right here, this choke up position is insane. They have the best finger choil that I've ever seen in my life. It is huge. It is just comfortable. You know, that finger choil, that choke up finger choil is perfect. Absolutely perfect. It's fat for most of it, so it's comfortable right there, and your hand just falls nicely into that place. So if I had to give the best stat of this knife in total, it is this finger choil right here. Now, we have this swedge going for the length of the blade. Obviously, it's a flat grind coming down here. Most of the edges have been knocked down. Um, they're not really, uh, it's not really contoured. They might be a little chamfered, that's about it. Got a little bit of jimping up here, which does serve a little bit of purpose, but my thumb having longer fingers kind of rests a little bit above the jimping, so take that for what you will. But it, it's not a big deal. As far as hot spots go, I don't feel any hot spots. I can feel the pocket clip when I'm bearing down, but it does not feel like a hot spot. I don't think that it's going to be a problem. And when you're choked up here, there is no hot spots whatsoever. Action on this guy, just freaking amazing. I mean, it's ceramic ball bearings a decently sized blade and nothing in the way it feels smooth i when i first got it i did feel a little bit of grinding in there and that's why the pivot was a little loose i took the ball bearings out and i soaked them in some soap and water and tried to get them clean uh, i lubed them back up and put them in and i don't feel that like textured moving anymore which is nice um the blade is very slicey it's very functional so Obviously, the first bet, the first thing that's that's the most amazing part of it is the ergonomics. The next thing is the blade is pretty damn nice. 
Um, it's a perfect size. It's you know it's standard and it's it's pretty damn slicey. Uh, carry. It's not going to be the greatest carry, but it's also kind of cool because it's got a titanium pocket clip that seems to carry fairly deep, which is nice. It's a frame lock titanium with an over travel stop, which is also very nice. What is not nice about this? Well, I'm going to say the only thing that I have a problem with this knife, and it's a pretty big, big freaking thing, is the D2 steel. This knife comes in at $110, came out about a year ago, I think, and it has D2 steel but a titanium frame lock. So it's kind of one of those where, you know, we always talk about the blade steel, so the blade steal this, the blade steal that, you know. Oh shit, I got S35 VN for 35 or for 85 bucks, you know. Um, and then we started talking about titanium. It's like, oh, I got a titanium S35 for 100 bucks from Tucson, or I got an M390, you know, for 120 bucks. But we're resting at a half titanium with D2 steel for 110 bucks. So it's kind of a philosophical question, and I don't mean to be kind of weird about it, but that's that's where it leads me is, is if this was stain if this was a steel liner or a steel frame lock, and this blade was S35, everybody would pay 110 bucks for it. But because it has titanium and D2, it makes me hesitate. But that begs the question: How bad is D2? Well, it's not right. It's not a bad steel. It's very edge retentive. It just has no corrosion resistance, and it's genuinely considered a tool steel, a budget brand style. Anything under a hundred bucks, D2, great. Anything over a hundred bucks, it's like blasphemy, D2. <clears throat> so, what you need to take into consideration is how is that going to affect your psyche? Because it's jacking with my mind as I'm talking about it. I don't want to hail a hundred and ten dollar D2 steel. On the flip side. You know, it's got a titanium frame lock. D2 steel's actually pretty good. You know, uh, I don't know the edge retention tests of D2 versus S30, S35. Um, I think S30 and S35 are like a little bit higher, but you got to remember those are powder form steels. That's why they come a little bit differently, and they have a smaller micro or a microstructure. You know, the carbide and all that smaller. But you know, neither here nor there. D2 is a perfectly acceptable steel. I don't know for what price point, because this is making me question the price point that I would pay for D2. Would I pay for this knife at $110? Having held it, I think I would. Um, the ergonomics are fantastic. This is a knife that you just, it, it's a working knife, and you feel like it's solid, like it's a solid quality piece. You know, the it, quality speaking is awesome. So... Out of this whole rant and ramble that I'll probably chop up and try to make a little bit more coherent, $110 for D2 but titanium frame lock, I think I'm okay with that. The problem for Best Tech is, is I don't think the masses are going to be okay with that. And, you know, it's been out for a year, I don't know how well it's selling, but in your mind you have to get over that hump that you're paying $110 for D2 steel because as an enthusiast not so much of a user but an enthusiast more than anything we want that better stuff right we want that S30 the S35 the M390s even the N690 it's different you know the Nitro VZ whatever like just the different stuff i think they would have been better off and easier sold if they would have put this as 154 cm or CPM 154 um, it's a relatively cheaper steel, not the powdered version, but the regular version is relatively cheaper. It's different. And because it's different, you're not going to have to get over that mental hump of, should I pay $110 for this knife? But long story short is if you like this knife, if you like the lines, if you want the ergonomic, you know, everything about it, you don't want to grab a Manix 2 and, you know, deal with the ugly because this knife is not ugly, it's really damn good looking, then yes, $110 for this knife is perfectly acceptable in my in my opinion. I think, you know, you just, you can get, you can do about the same. You can do about, I would think you can do a little better, but it all depends on what you're getting. A prime example of this is this right here. The QSP Copperhead, okay? I got this for 60 bucks. This is... 14C28 steel, which 
you can argue is better or worse than D2, less edge retention, much more corrosion resistant. You know, take it, take it or leave it, whatever. But it's about the same size blade. Ergonomics are very similar. You're missing that finger choil, but you know, or you have the Defcon Kabuto, which again, these aren't super comparable knives, but I'm giving you knives of the same size to look at. Now let's take a look at the Rat Model 1. You can get this in D2 steel for 40 bucks. The only thing you're not getting is a frame lock with titanium. So for a $60, $70 difference, is that worth it to you? You know, that's the decision you're going to have to make. I'm not going to make that decision for anybody because this knife brings a lot to the table. Um, and, and it's a fantastic knife, fantastic action, fantastic quality, fantastic design, fantastic everything. It's just that price is a little questionable. Thank you guys so much for watching. This has been my review of the Best Tech Bison. I do love this knife quite a bit. Even for $110, I think this is a freaking awesome knife. And Best Tech, almost anything with Best Tech, you can jack up the price by 15, 20 bucks and we'll still buy it because Best Tech is still that semi-exotic, less mainstream, but perfect freaking quality and awesome designs. So, you know, take that for what you will as well. So Best Tech, definitely check them out if you haven't. The Best Tech Bison, take a look at it. You know, they got a carbon fiber version for like 128 bucks, which makes a little bit more sense, but you're still getting the D2, so you're kind of like, ah, it's a great knife. If you can't get past that, you're, you're spending your own money. You spend your money how you want to spend your money. My name is Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. Thank you guys so much for watching. It's been a pleasure. Have a good day, guys.